me. Clean up on aisle three. Clean up on aisle three. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, that's called a spine tickling. Spine tickling. No, that's called a rim check. Welcome to Rim Check. My name is Reed Horner. And I'm Ian Dolan. A lot has been going on in the NBA, but first, Steph Curry broke his hand this week and is likely to miss the entire rest of the season. I'm surprised it was his hand that broke and not his back since he couldn't handle carrying the team without Clay and KD. It's crazy how the opinion has shifted so fast on Steve Kerr now that he doesn't have five superstars on his roster. Yeah, he's looking a lot more like Coach D from Big Mouth than Coach D from the Warriors. Joe Lacob came out and said that his team would never tank no matter what. But then they started Kai Bauman at point guard. Who? I, I, I don't know. I thought you knew. In other news, all basketball players look the same. At least according to Off-White. The fashion brand posted a picture of LeBron James wearing a pair of Off-White Air Force Ones. The only problem was the picture was of Nick Young. That's ridiculous. How could someone who's unemployed be able to afford those shoes? Before playing the Bulls, Anthony Davis said his hometown of Chicago is the mecca of basketball. And when asked if he would want to play there, he actually said that he is a free agent next year and that we'll see. When LeBron heard the news, he nervously started pulling out his hair plugs at the thought of KCP being his second best player. And over in Philly, Ben Simmons just strained his shoulder, which means we're going to have to wait a lot longer to add to our Ben Simmons three-point counter. Three? Do we, we have one of those? Yeah, it's right there on the bottom. Oh, shit. I, I never saw that before. You've never seen Ben Simmons hit a three-point shot either. At the next Brooklyn Nets home game, the first 5,000 fans will receive complimentary Kenny Atkinson chapstick. Ooh, give me some. Of course, buddy. Mmm. 100% natural, made in Brooklyn. We're now a few weeks into the NBA season, and is it just me, or are we watching a lot less games than we thought we would? Actually, for the first time, Reed, it's not just you. My cousin's friend's parents must be regretting paying all that money for League Pass. Though, someone who's watching more games than expected is Zion Williamson, who's out for the first six to eight weeks with a torn meniscus. The now unwatchable Pelicans, though, still have a ton of nationally televised games. As do the Clippers, even when Kawhi decides to sit out. Honestly, watching the Clippers play without Kawhi is like watching The Office after Steve Carell left. I like that shirt, by the way, Reed. The Office? I thought this was from Sanford and Son. <sighs> Kawhi has been sitting one game on back-to-backs, which has sparked the debate throughout the league around load management. No, not the debate about where you finish when you jerk off, but about healthy players taking off games. So they can masturbate. No, why don't, why don't you go take a break? To masturbate? No, for load management. I got you, don't worry. Kawhi only played 60 games last year, so this is nothing outside the ordinary for him. But with the Clippers' title aspirations and a number of nationally televised games, there's more attention on the team and Kawhi. He's really embracing the team culture by carrying on that long-standing tradition of disappointing Clipper fans. Why are you in the bathroom so long and... Why are you all sweaty? What do you mean? This is, I was in the shower. Michael Jordan chimed in on the load management debate and said his players are played to play 82 games. The only reason Jordan, Jordan never took games off is because he was worried about covering the spread. It's also totally fine if Terry Rozier and Cody Zeller burn out through the regular season, since there's no fucking way that team makes the playoffs. You know, I just figured out why the Hornets are so terrible. So Jordan can bet against them. Yeah, that's a pretty safe bet. We'll be right back after a quick message from our sponsors. We have sponsors? This week's episode of Rim Check is brought to you by Dame Dalla. His new album, I Don't Post Gym Workouts, just dropped with hits such as Shots Up No Cameras and Leg Pressing in the Dark, streaming on all platforms. And now, back to Rim Check. There's been an unusually high number of NBA players getting busted for PEDs this year. Wilson Chandler, DeAndre Ayton, and now John Collins have all received 25 game suspensions for varying offenses, ranging from diuretics to growth hormones. Obviously, they all were like, oh, I didn't know. My trainer told me to. Somebody slipped me something at a party and I woke up two days later. Give me a break. Yeah, it's not like the trainer's Cardi B. The NBA should test everyone in the heat because there's no way a team with that many white dudes should be that good. And of all the drug scandals that have come out, the least surprising was Dion Waiters, who was just suspended 10 games for taking an edible on the team's plane and then having a panic attack. 
At first, when the team saw Dion freaking out, they just thought he was upset about Tyler Hero stealing his job. Turns out, my dude was just too high. No such thing. Joel Embiid and Carl Anthony Towns got into a full-on brawl when their teams played each other recently. They each got a two-game suspension. Now, fighting obviously isn't as bad as taking pee pee pills or edibles, but the way these two fight, it's safer than drugs. Wow, and look Whoa. at this. Whoa! And B going at it with Carl Anthony Towns. And then B seems delighted by the whole thing. A little shadow boxing on his way out the door. Now, no punches were actually thrown. I mean, this is only a fight by NBA standards. I've had rougher experiences trying to squeeze into a New York City subway car. And skinny jeans. Like true millennials, the real fight took place afterwards on Instagram. Of course, Joel couldn't let the world think he got beat up by a dude named Carl. Yeah, that's almost as bad as getting beat up by someone named Reed. The two went back and forth throwing shots at each other, but the best was Embiid's quickly deleted comment on Kat's post. Imagine talking after a 20 point loss. You hate to see it, LMA. Whoa, 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 bro. I think that voice is racist. Stanford and Son? It was an honest mistake. When Jimmy Butler heard about the fight, he requested a trade back to Minnesota and then also Philly. And while everyone's looking forward to the rematch, unfortunately, the next time these two teams will face off isn't until March 24th, which, coincidentally, is the day my dad died. Hey, I'm Steven Jackson. And I'm Matt Barnes. We used to play in the NBA. And guess what we have now? A, A podcast. podcast. Where we talk basketball. And smoke weed. We never pulled any punches on the court. So you know we won't when it comes to our hot takes. So if you're looking for raw, unfiltered content and you smoke raws without filters, then tune into all the smoke. Light up or shut up. Well, that's it for this episode of Rim Check. Big thanks to LeBron for being such a good sport. Now, here's a photo montage of him looking fresh. Goodbye, everybody.